What is the Coastal Zone Act and is it keeping business from Delaware? And a Delaware history fact you probably didn't know. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. If you don't know the Coastal Zone Act, you should. It is a point of some controversy and discussion in Delaware right now. Uh, the Coastal Zone Act could be an important, what happens with it, could be important to the future of Delaware, both with the environment, jobs, and business. Depending on who you talk to, they'll focus on one of those three. Ken Crystal is from Widener University Delaware Law School to talk more about it. Let's start with exactly what it is. Well, the Coastal Zone Act was passed in 1971 as a way to regulate development in an area called the Coastal Zone, which is basically a two-mile segment all along the coast from the Pennsylvania line down to the Maryland line. And what does it do? Uh, well, primarily what it does is it, it regulates certain types of development that occur within the Coastal Zone. It prohibits two types of development, um, which are called heavy industry, like oil refineries or steel mills, uh, it prohibits bulk product transfer facilities, so a large shipping area where you're shipping out bulk quantities of gas or oil or coal. Uh, and then it regulates, it allows, but regulates manufacturing uses. Uh, so that could be auto assembly plants or commercial uh, office buildings, uh, health facilities, all kinds of things. They're allowed under the Act, but you've got to get a permit. And then there are many types of activities that aren't regulated by the Act at all. So agricultural activity, residential development, not regulated by the Act at all. So it, it's designed and was designed to try to prevent Shell Oil from building a huge refinery uh, just north of Lewis. Uh, but it regulates heavy industry and bulk product transfer facilities, and that's its primary focus. Many people that talk about Delaware growth and, and Wilmington growth and Newcastle County growth will look at the Coastal Zone Act and say that some of the regulations are too onerous, that it, it actually stymies uh, redevelopment and development because businesses don't want to go through all of the regulations that are entailed in there. Is that fair? I think it's not fair, uh, and obviously it depends on what the businesses want to do, right? But the Act certainly allows for manufacturing operations and encourages it. it you know, all they really have to do is go through a permitting process, but that permitting process has been relatively permissive for uses that satisfy the Act. So I'm not entirely sure. I, I sort of come from the position of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and I'm not convinced yet that it is stymieing a lot of business opportunities. So I'd like to see people say, look, here's something that, but for the Coastal Zone Act, would have been built there, because I think there's a lot of opportunity there for it to be used. I don't think anybody that argues against the Coastal Zone Act, if I can even phrase it that way, is, is in totality against it. Mm -hmm. They just seem to be against government regulation stymieing business or stymieing development. And that's what they're saying. They say that if we could just get some of the regulations that have even been added on since the act was passed, if they could get rid, rid of some of the regulations, uh, they could do more redevelopment, they could build more businesses, they could bring more jobs. Uh, is any of that true? You seem skeptical. I am skeptical because uh, as someone who has participated in the process, representing individuals and groups that are concerned about development in the coastal zone, uh, I, I don't see a lot of red lights towards development. What I see are a consideration of the statute itself says there are six factors you have to look at. You have to look at environmental impact, economic impact, aesthetic impact, do you have the zoning? How are you going to impact surrounding properties? Uh, but those are not factors that are used often, if ever, to squelch development opportunities. So it, maybe it's a function of people don't know. They think there's all this regulation and red tape that's built into it. But I think the reality of the situation is that there isn't. And so uh, as someone who is concerned about you know, all the good and protecting all the good that the act has done. I'd be concerned about, do we need to change it? And if so, let's see what has caused problems. How has it caused problems? Other than just sort of this general sense of too much regulation. Well, because I think regulation can do positive things. 
So let's see whether or not it's really causing problems, and if so, maybe we can target those. But I'm skeptical with this general notion that the Coastal Zone Act is a problem, and I'd, I'd want to see more proof of that. Let's get very specific about it since you work sure. with companies. A company wants to come into Delaware and they have a company that, let's just say, is in agriculture, which is one of the fine, but they're not big oil. And they come in and they want to do some manufacturing along the coastal zone. What, what process do they have to go through under the Coastal Zone Act? What they do is they apply to DENREC for a permit under the Coastal Zone Act. And then uh, that permitting process, they have to submit, fill out an application, submit it, uh, that is reviewed by DENREC, and then DENREC decides whether or not it's going to issue a permit. So it's basically getting a permit. It's a process that maybe is a little bit different, but it's not all that different from someone who says, I need to have a license to be able to operate my business, so I go apply for a license. Is, is there someone somewhere else for that company that's easier to go and not have to go through this permit process? Well, certainly the permit process you know, recognizes that you have to deal with environmental impacts and, and talk about economic impacts. So it's entirely possible that in the permit process, they'd say, you know what, you are going to, your business is going to generate this negative environmental impact, let's deal with it. Um, if and you there, went- there, in, in that comes a cost. And, and in that- Potentially. You have to change the way you do business, and in that it's probably easier to go somewhere else. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's not entirely clear to me that, that you're gonna have different issues in Pennsylvania that make it easier for you. There'll be different- well, let's get rid of Pennsylvania and Delaware. Yeah, well, I, I, I've, yeah I've, but, but I've whatever, I mean, yeah. but you know, and the other thing too, right, is that someone, if, if someone really has an issue about that, this is the coastal zone, so we're talking about basically Route 9 to the water, you can build on the west side of Route 9 and you don't have to worry about the Coastal Zone Act. So it's not as if it shuts the door to businesses in, in Delaware. It's just trying to deal with how are we going to deal with our coastline because 45 years ago, the people of Delaware made a decision that protecting the coastline from heavy industrial development was a good thing. It's, it's interesting you brought up DENREC. Is it possible that in other states it's a little easier or does everybody have to follow the same regulations? Well, in other states, you're going to have different regulations um, and sometimes depending on whether or not there's an environmental impact. Let's say you were going to emit some pollutants. Well, you might have to go to the DENREC of whatever state you're in and get a permit to make sure that you're satisfying their regulations related to that emission. Um, you're going to have to do that here, you're going to have to do that anywhere. So it really depends on what the impact is and what you're dealing with. DENREC has some unique things that are because of the Coastal Zone Act um, and you aren't going to face those anywhere else, but it doesn't mean it's a problem. Sir, thank you so much. For, right. I think people understand it uh, maybe, maybe just a little bit more. Hopefully. Uh, that's our conversation for now about the Coastal Zone Act. It's something that's going to keep coming up. Ken Crystal is with Widener University Delaware Law School. When we come back, the Delaware Division of Historic and Cultural Events. We'll talk about what they have coming up in October when the Delaware Way continues. <laughs>